I'm going to call this meeting order. If I could get our chaplain, Annette Cook, to come over and offer us the prayer. Councilman Conker, lead us in the pledge. We gather together here today intent on doing good work. We seek to represent fairly and well those who have given us this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding and wisdom. We seek to serve with respect for all, and may our personal faiths give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, members. We welcome you to the Lafayette City Parish Council meeting. We, as your representatives in the Lafayette Consolidated Government, welcome your involvement and encourage your participation. This meeting is a public hearing. If you wish to address the council on any item on this agenda, please fill out a blue request to address the council form, noting the agenda item number. The blue form is available to you in the foyer and should be submitted to the council clerk, Ms. Veronica Williams, to my left, seated in the middle, prior to the call of that agenda item. It is important to fill out the blue form completely and note the specific agenda item number about which you wish to speak. If the card is not completely filled out or is not legible to the clerk, you will not be given the opportunity to speak. If you have materials you wish to submit to the council, please give those to Ms. Williams along with your blue form. In an effort to allow everyone an opportunity to be heard, the five minute rule will be in effect. Speakers shall refrain from debating, personal attacks, and from making confrontational or derogatory comments. I'm requesting that the first row to my left be used for media only. Lastly, food and drinks are not allowed in the auditorium, and all phones and electronic devices shall be silenced from this point forward. I'm also requesting that anyone who approaches the council state their name and title for the official record. Meeting procedures are by resolution and not by Robert's rules of order. Documents including agendas, ordinances, resolutions, and minutes related to this meeting and others are posted online at www.lafayetteLA.gov or referred to the web address on the top of the agenda. The council encourages your involvement and participation by volunteering for boards and commissions. If you are interested in finding out which board suits your interest, call 291-8800 or pick up a pamphlet at the door. God bless you. Um, I do have a few announcements and members. There are a number of items that is being addressed on this agenda, so I suggest that you uh, capture these at this time. Um, first of all, due to the Independence Day holiday, the LPUN council meetings in the month of August will be conducted on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month to allow for the two weeks between introductory and final adoption of ordinances. We will return to the typical first and third Tuesday in September, so we we moving in that direction. Notice is hereby given that the Lafayette City Parish Council, serving as the governing and taxing authority of the city of Lafayette and the parish of Lafayette, plans to consider adopting an ordinance to levy and impose a renewed ad valorem property tax approved by the voters on November 8, 2016. The council will consider this tax at its meeting on Tuesday, September the 19th, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. here in the council auditorium located at 705 West University Avenue, Lafayette, Louisiana 70506. This notice is being published to comply with Louisiana Revised Statute 42 19.1. Members, item number six, resolution 033. 2017 ash industries tax exemption application as requested by the administration has a proposed amendment to the current sections one and two of the resolution to correspond to the subject matter in the title so there will be an amendment offered on item number six item number 13 item 13 Ordinance 127, 2017, sale of surplus AEDs as requested by legal and finance has been deferred until the August 22nd meeting to allow additional review of the language. Item 13 is being deferred. 
Item number 16, Ordinance 142, 2017, restating Chapter 10, Animals in its entirety, has an amendment as requested by legal to delete certain provisions regarding fines for animals running at large and for animals who have not been registered or vaccinated. Item number 16 will have an amendment. Also, I announced that Jared Bellard, council member from District 5, is unable to attend tonight's meeting. Councilman Bellard will not be with us tonight. It also gives me great honor and pleasure to wish our city parish attorney, Mr. Paul Escott, a happy birthday, which he will celebrate on Monday, August the 14th. <laughs> When you're being wished happy birthday is not appropriate to be on your knees at that time, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, a few chair announcements. Um, first of all, I, I think I'm going to do this one first. Um, a week, a little over a week ago, some members of the Lafayette Consolidated Government Council attended the Louisiana Municipal Association Conference in Shreveport, uh, which is our training. It's our municipal league here in the state. Uh, four members attended and attended workshops and trainings and ethics training, among other things, to make sure that we continue to be perfect servants, and um, we accomplished that. But while there, we were given an award for this government, and um, I, I think, Mr. Robert, though, I don't see Sidra in the room at this time, but um, what I would like to do at this time is present the award that we were presented, um, representing LCG, to the administration um, as it represents the entire government. And the award reads, it's presented to Lafayette Consolidated Government. It was presented by the Lieutenant Governor's Beautification Award for exceptional efforts for a cleaner and greener Louisiana. And we were one of only a few cities in the state of Louisiana who was granted this award and we was at the top of our category. So Mr. Mayor, President, we would like to present it to you at this time. I mean, at this time, I'd like to call Renee Stansberry forward, please. Uh, Renee is um, uh, one of the partners here. Um, as you all know, recently, um, actually on August 1st, uh, Lafayette went smoke-free in bars and nightclubs. Um, there was a recent celebration that some council members was not able to attend, and the, the mayor president was represented there, but he wasn't there. So Renee is going to present at this time for those who was not able to be with us. Well, I'm Renee Stansberry. I'm the Region 4 Manager with the Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living. And thank you, Councilman Boudreaux, for having me here tonight to show our appreciation to the council, as well as the mayor, for the Lafayette Smoke-Free Ordinance. All workers have the right to breathe clean air, and now with the smoke-free ordinance, all of Louisiana workers will be protected from the dangers of secondhand smoke. This has been something that many advocates in the community have worked on for a long time, and now we get to celebrate. This is an issue of public health, and our city leaders heard the request of the community and made our, our great city a place for all to enjoy. As Councilman uh, Boudreau uh, acknowledged, on July 30th, we had a smoke-free ordinance kickoff party that went um, for celebrating the ordinance going into effect on August 1st. And at the event, we presented Councilman Boudreau, Councilman Lewis, Councilwoman Cook, and Mayor Robidoux's representative with a token of our appreciation. And so I'm here tonight to recognize those members who weren't in attendance um, as a token, just a thank you of our appreciation and the communities. Thank you again for allowing me here tonight to present you with that token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, I think that that's all of my announcements uh, for now. So what I'll do, I'll open up the floor for any council announcements. Any council member have announcements at this point? Seeing none, we're going to move into the executive president's report. Mr. Robidoux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I'd like to bring up uh, David. Are you here? All right, David uh, Domain with the uh, International Center. We, um, we, as in Lafayette, received an award specifically um, uh, the International Center. And I'll let David explain it to you, but it's a very prestigious award, um, especially uh, when you consider that, that this was the second award that uh, Lafayette has won. So David, take it away. Dave Domang, I'm the operations coordinator for the International Center. The award that we received uh, this May in Washington was presented by Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross. It's the President's E-Star Award for Excellence in Export and Export Services. We received the first level of the award in 2011, and this year, the award that we got, we were one of only five that got the second level across the nation. We were one of only two that got the award for export services as opposed to direct exporting. We were the only honoree from Louisiana and we were the only municipality in the country to be honored. So we're very proud of the accomplishment. Um, it serves as some validation for the efforts that we've been making for 27 or 28 years. And um, we hope to continue to do that for Lafayette and for the region. Uh, if I may, I'd like for, to our, recognize our staff, our director, Philippe Gustin, our secretary, Roxanne Godot, our trade development specialist, Vanessa Paredes, our information and translation specialist, Christoph, taking pictures. And we have a number of our board and past board here as well. Would you stand, please? Thank you, Dave. We were also the only group in the country that had our mayor with us. And thank you very much for that. And, and you and I got to meet that company that did all the Batmobile type of stuff. But right. uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they were doing some incredible work, but he couldn't tell us what they did or what countries they did it for or um, exactly how long they were in business. But uh, um, they were an interesting group that uh, were apparently exporting a lot. So Dave, thank you for all your efforts. I know you had played a large role in and uh, us getting this award. So thanks, Dave. Thank you. And then I'd like to bring, uh, I think Thomasine is here. There you are. Uh, to come talk to you all about some, uh, some bids. Thank you, Thomasina. Good evening, I'm Tom Thomasina Oliver, Purchasing Manager. These are inventory items, therefore I need Council approval to award these to the low evaluated bidders. All right, motion by Councilman Nakan. Can I get a second? Second by Conk. Council discussion. There is not any blue cards. Okay. Call the vote, please, to grant this. Yes. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District six. Yes. District seven. District 8, yes. District 9. Yes. Motion is approved. Is that it, Mr. Mayor? You have anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. We're going to now move to ceremonial presentations. Uh, we're going to recognize the Miss Lafayette USA pageant winners. Um, I think we have some uh, members and, and pageant founders and coordinators here with us. Um, the competition was recently held in Burke Hall on the campus of UL Lafayette. Um, Aaron Edmondson, co-owner of the pageant and a former Miss Louisiana, will intru introduce the winners for us of each category and give a background of the pageant. Um. Thank you guys for having us tonight. How are y'all doing? Fine, thank you. Good. 
So I'm Erin Edmiston. I'm the co-director of Miss Lafayette USA pageant alongside with Ross Walters. And these lovely ladies are our current title holders who won the titles of Miss Lafayette USA, Miss Lafayette Teen USA, and Preteen Lafayette USA back in June, which was held at UL's campus um, Burke Hall Theater. And they have worked really hard this summer preparing for the upcoming Miss Louisiana USA and Miss Louisiana Teen USA pageant, which will be held in October in Metairie. So I'll go ahead and introduce, this is Josie Stevens, Miss Lafayette USA, Lindsay Conk, Miss Lafayette Teen USA, and Sophie Green, Preteen Lafayette. Thank you guys for having us. Did you say conk? Conk. <laughs> yes, conk. Like as in. <laughs> as in. <laughs> That's me. She has hair. Yeah. yeah, she got a lot more hair. <laughs> Are the girls going to say anything? I mean, I'm sure they got their pageant voices because they certainly got their pageant stance. Do you guys, <laughs> guys want to just say a little bit about you guys? Sure. This is just more practice, getting you okay. ready for the big title. Hi, thank you all for letting us be here tonight. My name is Josie Nicole Stevens. I am 22 years old and I'm a student at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. I am majoring in chemical engineering and mathematics, minoring in biology. Yeah, yeah, good. Beautiful and smart. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Lindsay Conk. I'm Miss Teen Lafayette USA, and I'm 16. I'm a cheerleader at Como High School. And who's your mama? Who's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad is Charles Conk, and my mom is Amy Conk. Thank you. All right. <laughs> no relation. You didn't have anything to do with it, Bruce. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie Green, and I go to St. Leo Seton. I'm 12 years old, and I dance at Dance Graphics, and I'm a cheerleader at school. All right, congratulations. Well, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We're going to now move to resolutions. Again, this is a public hearing, and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the council. The five-minute rule does apply. Liz, could you please read item number six? Resolution 33, 2017. A resolution of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to execute a letter expressing approval of Ash Industries, Inc., Incorporated's industrial tax exemption application after meeting the new criteria of the program creating jobs and supporting the growth of manufacturing in Louisiana. Motion by Nakan. Second. Second by Castile. Mr. Robidoux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just by way of a little bit of background, the state has an um, ad valorem industrial tax exemption program that operated one way for the last, I don't know how many decades. Uh, recently, uh, under Governor John Bell Edwards, they, they changed the requirements since they're giving away ad valorem taxes, um, which has a local impact. Uh, the governor and the legislature decided that it made sense that uh, the locals would weigh in and offer up a letter of recommendation uh, before the, any company would be granted that exemption. Uh, the case here is that we have a company here in town that had been granted that exemption and, and created a bunch of jobs and, and got the, the 10 years of, of uh, ad valorem exemption and are currently scheduled to pay well over 400000 a year now going forward. Uh, they're expanding to take on uh, um, some more manufacturing and so for that expansion piece they'll be granted uh, an exemption going forward to create those new jobs and then a decade from now we'll get that additional uh, ad valorem tax also. So this is a, a requirement now that's under state statute and uh, and we fully support. Uh, we've written a letter um, and need the ordinance to, to get that sent over to the state government. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Uh, members, there's an amendment, a proposed amendment here. Um, the administration is asking for in sections one and two of the resolution to correspond to the, the subject matter in the title so they could kind of get in line. Would someone offer that please? Motion by Castile, second by Conk. Okay, we're going to now open up the floor for discussion of council members. Mr. Terrio. Is this on the amendment, sir, or the uh, ordinance in general? The amendment first. You uh, wanted the I'll ordinance? Wait, I'll wait on the okay. ordinance. Yeah. 
Thank you for that question. Yeah, this will be on the amendment. Once we get through the amendment, we open up the floor again for the um, the resolution as it's been amended. Okay, um, there is none. Any blue cards on this matter? We do have three speakers who signed in, not necessarily to the amendment. But, right. Um, so just as an explanation for those speakers who have signed in, whenever there's an amendment that takes place on the floor, we give you the option to speak to that if you so choose. If you do not, you still hold your spot. When the, If the amendment fails or whatever happens, you get to speak to the resolution as a whole. So when your name is called, you could just indicate if you want to speak to the amendment only. This is just the amendment that's being offered. First name, please. Glenn Edwards. Mr. Edwards? I don't have any comment to the amendment, just reserve the right to speak to the resolution. Thank you, sir. Party Spence? Spence? I'd like to speak to the resolution, please. Yes, Ad sir. Adam Chapman? That concludes the blue courts. Okay, all right. We've honored that and we stayed in good standing. So um, we're going to, Mr. Terry, we, we're going to vote on the amendment first to make sure it goes through, then I'll open it up to you. So we've honored blue cards as well as council speaking, so let's call the vote on the amendment. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. Motion is approved to amend. Okay, it's been amended. Now we're going to open up the floor to council members on the resolution as amended. Mr. Terrio. Oh, you, you cleared yourself. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Yes, one question here was that uh, we're having the Industrial Development Board, and I think as the, uh, the city parish, the, uh, the city mayor uh, mentioned, is that uh, this was an agreement. It's been done in the past. Let me read to the public here that basically. Um, we have a resolution which requires, I'm sorry, a resolution of support from local government, the school board, and the sheriff, which means the exemption here will provide approximately $50,000 in ad valorem tax savings over a five-year period, which amounts to uh, $250,000 for 10 jobs. In the future, ad valorem tax revenue and sales taxes to the taxing bodies in Lafayette Parish. And it says this exemption does not affect sales taxes, but it is property taxes. So I guess the, the, the question I have is that we're going to waive $250,000 in, in taxes to these taxing bodies when everybody's scrambling around for and creating new taxes that can be collected we continue to look at businesses and I understand what we're trying to do here but when we do this over and over again where we give exemptions to uh, certain businesses and certain bodies uh, that we know are not going to be contributing like the average citizen does because the average citizen cannot get an exemption from the industrial development board from the state uh, for the taxes they pay. This only applies to businesses. So we had some information provided to us recently, I think from the assessor that showed uh, uncollected or amounts that were waived um, in the tune of millions of dollars. So when we are going to grant exceptions and exemptions to the tune of millions of dollars, how can we come forth to the people of Lafayette Parish and ask them and tell them that you need to ante up and pay more when we're not making certain individuals pay more. Now granted, I know these are, these are questions that can be taken one way or another. Mr. Robodeau, I certainly want to give you an opportunity to respond to it. Um, it's a valid question, so um, I'd like to hear maybe what you can have to, uh, to answer it. Maybe there's something I just don't see here. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, first, just to make sure that everyone um, uh, understands the facts of this particular case um, and not uh, the philosophical argument of whether or not we, we should grant exemptions to create jobs and, 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 and some for, some against. In this particular instance, it's 50000 over a five-year period, so it's, it's, um, it's only 10000 a year. The 50000 is the total. It's not the 250000 that you alluded to. So... Um, 
internally if the if the industry's here and, and, and I'm incorrect then I'll, I'll certainly hope that they will comment when they come up for the blue cards that being said it certainly changes the calculation of how much we're willing to pay per job and um, and uh, but I do believe that uh, in a lot of instances and certainly in this is instance that it is um, uh, a significant investment on our part um, but that we're going to get a significant return going forward I think it'll help them um, create the manufacturing jobs long term that that we ultimately want and so for what I think is a short um, a short-term investment I think we will in fact get the the return there and and again I believe that I have to get permission from the council to write a letter stating that but there's also other a taxing agencies that have to agree and um, and so if they don't then you know then then this won't happen but uh, I feel strongly that this is an instance when it makes sense to do and what kind of specific jobs were these do you know the 10 jobs you said manufacturing any specific yeah I didn't I didn't I, I didn't say 10 jobs I just said that the, the the amount of money would create and then the blue cards here I'm sure can speak to some of the exact uh, figures as it uh, relates to this particular instance but um, it's manufacturing jobs which are well um, you know higher paying jobs and the, the types of jobs that typically have the longevity that you want in the community okay and I do agree with you um, I was mistaken in that it it shows fifty thousand dollars over a five-year period I was taking it as five times fifty so um, other in other businesses in the past they have made it a certain amount each year over a five or ten year period so um, uh, you're correct fifty thousand so let's do this mr. chair uh, that's all I have for now I'd like to hear what uh, the blue cards have to say thank you okay appreciate you Councilman Eby. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the questions I have, I think, are probably going to be best answered to, I guess, uh, some representative from Ash Industry. Um, we mentioned these 10 jobs. I know a lot of other exemptions that we typically get from a state level. Um, you have to be able to. Y'all could come to address her question. Okay. Oh, that, you're with, uh, that doesn't uh, take yeah, away you. your, your speaking opportunity. You're only responding to a member's questions. Yeah. Is I know typically that uh, for these kind of exemptions, you have to, uh, if you say you're going to have 10 jobs, you have to be able to prove that you've hired these 10 people. Um, there's a lot of waving going you on. You could stay. You have to prove that you've hired these 10 uh, positions. Is this one of those exemptions where they have to hire these 10 positions? Uh, what hap If it is, and what happens if they don't hire those 10 positions? I was curious to find out the average salary for this position for these types of positions um, and this fifty thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a year is that just LCG's cut or is that LCG LPSS etc so I don't know if it's that's part you part you guys but I guess I'll go ahead and uh, offer it up thank you just so you, you you say what happens if they don't hire the 10 correct just so they could be clear mm -hmm. The average salary of those positions that have been named a, a salary range I know it, it based on experience and all that just a good range y'all could give a range and last um, the 50,000 over the five years is that all is that the amount that is calculated to LCG or is that the complete tax amount for all of the tax and entities for the record uh, mr. chairman my name is Glenn Edwards I'm counsel for ash industries Hardy Spence is the actual owner He's going to make a presentation about his business and, and what he does. But to your specific uh, questions, the $50,000 is the total tax exemption. So all, LU, all LCG is talking about is its share of the ad valorem tax. So it would be well less than uh, the $10,000 a year. It's its share. It shares with the school board, the sheriff's department, and all of the entities who participate in the ad valorem tax. And, for the record, uh, we do have already a letter from the sheriff, Sheriff Mark Garber, uh, recommending uh, the exemption. We appear before the Lafayette School Board tomorrow night with our resolution, and the mayor president is correct. It, it, we have to have approval from the sheriff, the school board, and the Lafayette Consolidated Government before the governor will sign the contract granting the exemption. Uh, to the point of the employees hired, uh, the, the, the 10 employees have already been hired and in fact uh, 
15 employees have been hired as a result of this expansion. Uh, we find ourselves uh, kind of putting the cart before the horse on this particular application because in prior years we did not, we weren't required to get local approval. It was just an approval by the Board of Commerce and Industry and uh, went to the governor and the governor signed or he didn't sign uh, with Governor Edwards' executive order in 2016 requiring local approval, we found ourselves with an application pending under the old rules and we had already started the expansion and started the business and they said, oh, we've got to, you've got to go now because of the executive order and get local approval. So we're, we're in the unique position of being able to tell you that we haven't we're not promising to create 10 jobs. We've already created 10 jobs. In fact, we've created 15 jobs uh, in, in the manufacturing business. I will let uh, Mr. Spence, because I do not know, speak to the average salary or, or his payroll for the, uh, these jobs created. And, and keeping in mind, since the inception of his business, which started out 10 years ago as a garage business, he's now hiring, he's now employing over 65 people in the city of Lafayette. So, Hardy. Um, my name is Hardy Spence, president of Ash Industries. Uh, we've been here in Lafayette for 26 years. I grew up in Louisiana and uh, married a Lafayette girl, and this is going to be home forever. Um, my dog and I started the business, and uh, we started out by taking Louisiana plastics. Seventy percent of the nation's raw plastic is made here in Louisiana, but we ship most of it away in train cars. So we started our business in Lafayette because we can convert those pellets using heat into finished goods. We make uh, thermoplastic medical devices, electronic components, uh, industrial components for all sorts of industries, everything from training soldiers before they go over to Afghanistan and Iraq to parts for laparoscopic surgery to fun things like uh, pacifiers that are in the shape of mustaches for babies, so all, all sorts of odd things. But we, we help people take their ideas and turn them into finished goods. Uh, this new group we started, uh, the equipment was installed in June of 2016. So we've been operating for quite a while now, and, and like Mr. Edwards says, we're going back and trying to get approval by the state because this contract will be important to us. We've installed almost $700,000 in equipment. And we're using that equipment today to provide sir, jobs. What's oh, your sorry. name again? Hardy Spence. Mr. Spence. Yes, sir. I was about to call you Mr. Ash. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone with, with, with all due respect, if we could do this, because you're going to have opportunity to oh, speak I'm sorry. to your blue yes, card. Sir. It looked like you were getting into you your presentation. Yes, sir. This is more or less council time. Oh, I'm the sorry. The only unanswered question uh, at uh, this point. Our payroll's was, running at uh, $31,000 a month right now. For, for this group alone. Right. For these, for these 10, 15 employees. Yeah, it's, it's closer to 15 now. Yeah. Okay. I just. And, and these are all uh, obviously local people. Uh, the vast majority of our people are our neighbors from the north side of Lafayette. Uh, we're near the corner of U University and Willow, right next to the Willow Apartments. If you go up University, take a left on Willow, we're the first building on the right. And my final question is, I, well, congratulations on your expansion. Thank you. I, You've gone above and beyond the 10 to the 15, or yeah. almost 15, you mentioned. Do you have plans for expanding any more in the recent future? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked that. We have 11 acres of land there on Willow, and we have tremendous plans. There's a real need in the United States for manufacturers who listen to their customers and are innovative in our products. And we make a lot of incredible things that are healing people across the nation. Uh, this new group, one of the products we make are uh, specialized vessels for transporting kidneys, livers, lungs, mm -hmm. uh, and transport surgery. Odd looking things, but the manufacturer could not find anybody to cooperate with them. They're out of California. And uh, I like bringing California money back to Lafayette. Me too. Uh, and as far as, in, that's great for the expansion of the actual facility. What about more jobs? I'm assuming that would come with more jobs. There's only two ways for us to make money. It's with equipment and people. Uh, it's, it's a real simple formula, but without people, equipment, and raw materials, we can't, we can't make money. Okay. And we have a fantastic group of people. We have very low turnover. Uh, most of our people are hired locally and have to be trained because our skills are unique to our industry. And uh, you're not going to find them around Lafayette. 
Perfect. That's all I have, Chairman. Thank you and okay. congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Question, uh, how long have you guys been at that location? Uh, 11 years. 11 years. So for the 11 years, y'all have been paying property tax, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Terrio? Yes, a couple of quick questions. Yeah. Number one, look, I'm a huge advocate for business, love businesses, but I want to clarify that I'm a huge advocate for businesses that stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you would be that, and I understand where you guys are coming from, and some people say, yeah, I'm doing it because it's available. But what do I tell to all, what, how do we respond to other businesses that create jobs without getting some kind of assistance from government, local, state, or whatever? Uh, the equipment we use is very unique to the area, and the skills we use to make these parts are extremely unique. There's a lot of experimentation. We're doing a lot of research and development, working long hours, and uh, we have a really high cost to get started. But once this is anchored in place, this part right here is a buoy system for a, a local company in Harahan, but it was being manufactured in Georgia, and they weren't doing a good job. So once again, we're, we're going to bring money back to Lafayette, expand jobs, expand capability, uh, build more buildings. Uh, that's what we've steadily done for almost three decades. No, and, and it's great, and we appreciate that. But I guess the question again, and, and for me to rephrase it again, is that what do I tell the other businesses that have technological issues and, and things that they have to accomplish on their own without the assistance of others? Well, just w with all due respect, uh, Councilman, the, the program available through the Louisiana Department of Commerce and Industry is not restricted in who it's, it's available to. I mean, anybody can seek the, the exemption contracts, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, we did uh, 10 years ago when we undertook this new expansion. We, we sought, we filed an application, we, we met the qualifications. So it's not a closed program. It's not a program that's not open to, to to any new entrepreneur or any business who is expanding in Lafayette and can present the data to the department indicating that they will create new jobs and they are making new investment into the community. Understandable. And you, you kind of went into my next question there that you, earlier you had mentioned and, and just a moment ago you did again, y'all been doing this for a while, mm -hmm. but now you have to come to the council get approval. Right. How much money in the past have you guys received uh, without coming from the council? I mean, is there a, a number? I mean, I'm not yeah. trying to drag you guys across no. the carpet, but there it's is a legitimate question. There is, there is a number. There is a number in the past uh, 10 years through the contracts. Uh, we have saved approximately $380,000 in uh, ad valorem taxes for our initial investment in the equipment and, and startup of the business. Those assets alone will produce over the next 10 years $440,000 in ad valorem taxes that will be paid that can no longer be exempt. The exemptions are for five-year contracts, which can be extended one time. Right. So we've saved 330, I think $38,000 in the last 10 years. We are slated with the current value of our assets and our investment to pay $440,000 over the next 10 years. So you make my point, exactly. You're one company and you're doing a great job and we, we appreciate what you guys are doing. But let's suppose you got 10, 20, 30 that does exactly what you're doing locally and you add all that up. You see how much money we're talking about? I, I understand that, but I, I would suggest to you that by employing almost 70 people, payroll, all people who live in Lafayette, we're also paying sales tax, we're paying use tax. This is only the, the ad valorem tax. All of those folks have money and jobs in Lafayette that they put back into the economy, they pay in sales tax. So, look, philosophically, I understand where you're coming from. And frankly, we had discussions that this is not a politi politically great time to ask for an ad valorem tax exemption, okay? But I think that, that the, the work that, that Hardy and his wife and, and the ownership of their business have put into this community, the commitment that they've had to, to stay here has brought much value to this community. I mean, he. In his presentation, he'll let you know the demographics, but a lot of his employees are single moms. I mean, we are, we are putting money in the pockets of people of this community who need the jobs. They're high-tech jobs. They're getting good training and, and making themselves the better for it. And we just, I respect your, your view, and, and your question is a valid question. Uh, I just 
respectfully believe that you know we're doing our part and and are justified in making this request no i appreciate it and one final question to you sir if you don't mind yeah real quick easy in the event that you guys would not receive this money would you still move forward well, well we're in the business uh it's just it's i'm uh, just saying you've got 15 employees that yes, are sir. employed now yeah. whether you got this fifty thousand dollars or not you would still move forward yes sir that's all i have thank you folks thank you appreciate your time thank you mr Cohn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For clarification purposes, this request of $50,000 on property tax exemptions as it applies to Lafayette Consolidated Government is only $14,000 because we only get 28% of all property taxes. The other and that's point over five years. So divide over, that by over, five years and it's, it's a little over $2,000 a year. Thank you, sir. And uh, the comment that uh, property tax exemptions are not um, available for non-businesses is not accurate. Uh, we as individual homeowners get $75,000 homestead exemption every year. Thank you. All right. That seems to be all the council questions at this time. So we're gonna move to our next blue card. The first speaker is Glenn Edwards. I, I'm That's just why here. I did that. I knew it was one of you. I'm going to turn it over. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Spence as the owner to make his presentation as his counsel. I'm just here to answer legal questions that you may have as following his presentation. Okay. So, so go ahead on and acknowledge him as a speaker um, because we, we, being a counsel of law, you know how important it is to follow the rules. <laughs> Absolutely. And they got people in the audience who they look for us to mess up sometimes. <laughs> We don't so, want that to happen. Yeah, just go ahead on and acknowledge the next speaker. The please. next speaker is Hardy Spence. Uh, I'm Hardy Spence, president of Ash Industries. Uh, when we came to Lafayette, the dream of Lafayette or of Louisiana was to bring manufacturing back to the state. Uh, Lafayette itself invested a whole lot of money in the manufacturing extension, uh, I'll call Meepole at uh, UL. And uh, we really fell in love with the possibilities of bringing manufacturing to Louisiana with products made in Louisiana. Uh, we started our business with uh, one machine. I call it my first house because that's about what it was. I slept on a couch next to it. Our first medical parts were uh, medical devices for connecting optical fibers for a company in Sunnyvale, California. And we expanded from one company to another, uh, one process to another, and we used the in industrial tax exemptions to expand from injection molding to tooling to injection molding silicone, to metal injection molding, and now to rotational molding. We have a lot of land to take advantage of. We have a lot of fantastic people that are growing with the company and have invested themselves in the opportunities for bringing jobs and manufacturing to Lafayette. Uh, like I said, this buoy system is something that was is, is satisfying the needs of a Louisiana company uh, that was being manufactured elsewhere has been brought back. Uh, specifically, we bought the equipment with this industrial tax exemption to rotationally mold products. And if you've never seen rotational molding, it's an incredible process. It's extremely interesting. Uh, for an engineer, I, I love watching it, and uh, it's kind of fun to be a part of it. Uh, that cooler was made uh, with a rotational molding uh, process. Coolers, buoys, kayaks, canoes, uh, kidney transport systems, they're hollow products and we're putting the plastic in the mold, we're rotating the mold, the plastic melts, forms against the outside of the mold, we open the mold up, pull the part out. It's completely different than anything we've done before. And the industrial tax exemption has helped us be able to get into this and uh, expand what we offer to other people and we very much appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I just have a couple of questions yes, myself. Sir. First of all, I want to first thank you for locating your business in District 3, a, a place that's extremely difficult to get businesses to locate, along with my district, of course, um, and, and offering up jobs. And, and so I say thank you for that. Um, I was in a conversation today, and I've been in many lately, at how our housing market drives our business sector, um, in particular retail, but just business in general. And um, so, Whenever I cross paths with someone 
who, who voluntarily seeks out land in underserved and deprived areas, I, I really appreciate that. So thank well, you. Well, we have for great that. neighbors, and uh, they've become a great friends at Ash Industries. There's some real talented people that are just looking for something to do. The next thing I want to acknowledge, um, your council indicated that you had some uh, single mothers who was employed yep. there, and we know some of the challenges that are faced there. And uh, when we get into conversations of tax and government and the cost, sometimes one thing can have a, a positive effect on another. And um, I, I know a lot of the individuals that I represent or I have served in other capacities over the years, uh, when you look at uh, child care services and the ability to send to quality uh, facilities so they could be school ready and all of those things and you know the issues with health care everything from the national and federal level on down to the local level the ability to, to be able to just do the um, the common bitter necessities and, and have a, a certain quality of life so the fact that you're employing that demographic of, of individuals I have to say thank you to that publicly as well because um, and, and being the manufacturing job that it, it's kind of it's, it's unique because it doesn't require a specialization educational right. wise but it pays a greater wage than minimum and, and other things so I appreciate that as well yes, thank you and um, I want to say thank you to that um, you you was asked a question on whether or not you would um, still go forward mm -hmm whether or not we pass this. And of course, I understand the sheriff has did his part, that's one leg. Um, but yet I wanna thank you again, because I heard you say that you got a contract from another place that didn't do the job as well as you're currently doing it. And when we talk about whether or not you would go forward, the quality of services that you put forward, I would hate to see you lose something and have to lay people off. Uh, for whatever reason, and those services go somewhere else. And one of the things that I've appreciated here in my 10 years is that I'm not competing against myself. I'm competing against other municipalities, I'm competing against other states, and in some instances, you know, other countries. So I, I, I just appreciate what you're doing, and I'm, I'm really sincere about that. And we, some people, let me, let me just say this, because uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need even need a response from you yet. Um, if we get to that point, we'll come back to it. But some of us, some of us have to deal with issues or subjected to things and have hardships that others don't have to take on. And I respect that. I, I, I told a group today in a meeting, you know, your needs may not be mine and my needs may not be yours, but that don't mean yours is greater than mine or mine is greater than yours. It's our needs. And I could, the, the need for jobs in the area that you are located and the fact that Lafayette could, could take on this title of, of being this manufacturer of these products. And then we start talking about destination points and, and where people want to live and where they want to spend their money. And, and I don't know, we recognize um, um, an agency earlier. I don't know if you're exporting or anything and if you've used any of the resource from the International Center. But, you know, we just reckon, got recognized for importing and exporting. And it's a bigger picture than what Councilman Kunk has identified as $2,000 a year to Lafayette Consolidated Government. And, and I, you know, to think that, oh, well, that's money we could put toward law enforcement or money we could put toward drainage or money we could put toward roads. No doubt, no doubt. But the, 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 the result of what you're doing, it's also money that's generating jobs is also money that's generating sales taxes. It's also money that's generating ad valorem taxes that will be collected, okay? So I just didn't want you to stand there and get a single message and not feel that the Lafayette community in a majority appreciates what you do. And we thank you for what you do. And I can tell you, I'm gonna support this. And, um, and I wish you the continued luck. And um, if you could create some more jobs, I'd appreciate that too. <laughs> we, we'd, like, we'd like to, and any one of you are, are welcome to come by at any time and tour the facility. It's, it really fires the imagination to see what's possible. Uh, it's like a, a living example of how they do that, that TV show. A lot of neat things happen here in Lafayette, just kind of behind the scenes that other people just don't know about. Again, thank you. Thank you. Next blue card, please. Final speaker, Adam Chapman.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Chapman. I'm the marketing uh, director with iLandman. Um, as Mr. Terrio alluded to earlier, I approached the, uh, the small group council meeting about a month ago uh, with some information about some property tax exemptions that have been going on. Um, I think that was specifically for the calendar year of 2015. Uh, a laundry list of companies who have these exemptions totaling upwards of three, four million dollars, um, all, all said and done. Uh, and I certainly don't want to don't want to attack these guys and their business. They obviously nice people and doing a great thing, and I, I surely appreciate them as as much as everyone does. Um, you know, I, I pose the question to you all of how do we, what's the barometer for success on these kinds of things? After all these many years of offering these exemptions. And here's a, a success story right here. Um, how do we take that long list and those millions of dollars a year and translate it into something verifiable to say that this is a, a working idea? Um, you know, it's, we've mentioned that it's a philosophical debate on whether or not this money uh, is invested and, and it's working. And I'm wondering, how do we tell that it's working? And if the public's if the government's uh, funds or the school board's funds or anybody else's budgets are not where they need to be, which which I believe we've agreed in recent you know times that that's the case, what other measurement do we have to say that these programs are successful? Um, you know, I, I I hate to use the word speculative if that sounds too negative, but we know how much is walking out the door and we can't seem to ever truly account for what's coming back. And, and when we're in the hole, it sure seems like a, like a tough uh, sale to say we're gonna keep doing this and we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep trying this same thing. Though after these many years, what do we show for it? And, and I think, again, the, the public coffer or our quality of life are gonna be the two things that we're gonna talk about. One is more definable than the other, which is, often makes for a difficult discussion, but um, as Mr. Terrio also said, if this was working, and if it was working the way it should, why wouldn't we do this across the board? Why not, why not give every single business these opportunities? Um, and it's not that they don't all necessarily do as uh, noble of a business as the next person or something as cool and interesting uh, as a manufacturer like this, but how do we take the lo a look at the bigger picture, uh, as Councilman Boudreaux mentioned, and see what this really boils down to? Um, I, to me, it seems like we're just in too tough of a place after having done the same thing for so long to continue down this road. Um, so I pose that question to you. And, and again, you know, I shared those numbers a while back and was hoping for some more clarification on that. And, you know, I, I'd love to see more if there was more available. Uh, but it seems like the answer is always the same the jobs are created the money is spent but but where's the end result where's the where's the money for the things you just mentioned drainage schools obviously we're missing it somewhere and i don't think it's because costs of those things have necessarily skyrocketed over these many years because technology has gotten better processes are more efficient than they ever used to be so you know how do we figure out what the true dollar amount uh, is worth to us so with that I'll, I'll leave that to your to your response thank you Thank you. Mr. Terrio? Yeah, just um, one quick um, comment I want to make, and this has nothing to do with the company. I want to be very clear with that. But in the past, we've heard that, you know what, this um, or this kind of investment, if you know, for every dollar invested, you know, you make two dollars or three dollars back or five or seven. I'll tell you right now, I've spoken to so many people that says every time they've heard that, we want to know where I can go, and many others, where I can go and invest a dollar and get a seven, five, or three dollar, or four dollar return on a dollar investment, because I want to invest in that. Wouldn't anybody else? We hear this all the time. You know, for every dollar invested, you're going to get four dollars back. Let me know, because I, I tell you right now, I'll go to the bank and we'll get some money and we're going to invest in it and we're going to make a lot of money. So, anyway. Guys, thank you again. And again, for what Mr. Boudreaux says, look, uh, strong advocate for business. Without business, we don't exist. That, that is the life of, of America everywhere. So uh, thank you again and, and appreciate it. That's all I have, sir. And I, I, li I like to add to that because I've, I've always felt that there has to be a recognition of balance. 
without business we don't exist and without us business don't exist it, it, it just goes hand in hand and and you know for the gentleman who spoke um, the presentation he made to the uh, parish funding assessment group um, we, we have we are looking at that and as a matter of fact we're still addressing those issues that's not a, a dead item <coughs> and I actually think that is one of a bigger part it's not the entirety um, but but there are a lot of things in the measuring stick I don't know that there has been one created that might be the key is to create that measuring stick what we depend upon now is for example I know he has an attorney from Lafayette so that's that's a client and then I know his attorney had people working his office so when we talk about jobs it's real it might not be the answer to all and some people might not even recognize that as the thing but it is a real thing you know and, and, and when I say what I said earlier for individuals who have trouble finding jobs because of educational levels or experiences or trainings or circumstances for me that's a real thing for other people who are highly educated or or highly trained they don't recognize that because they have this this you know pick of the litter type thing where you could go and get a job anywhere but in this world for these employees that he kind of alluded to that's that's just a real thing you know another measuring stick is the fact that they're here like I said, when we compete a, across parish lines, state lines, is that when companies start assessing and evaluating, maybe they could go next door or down the street or somewhere else. Those things have happened, and we've seen jobs go, we've seen jobs come. So it's about a competitive thing, but I don't think there's one barometer that we're measuring with, and that might be what we need, that one measuring thing that we could check these, is it really jobs? Are they sustainable jobs? You know, are these individuals, pan into the system, you know, and then maybe we could answer some of those questions, but for now, that's how I kind of look at it. Mr. Robidoux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the, the debate. Um, it wasn't that long ago that the state realized that manufacturing jobs were leaving, not just Louisiana, but the, the entire country and going overseas, and they decided, I think, wisely to say, we need to do whatever we can to attract manufacturing jobs. Uh, back to this state and so they came up with this um, ad valorem tax exemption program uh, to encourage people to uh, take out loans mortgage their homes take the risk associated with manufacturing um, and open up a business that's going to provide us with these manufacturing jobs and for that um, a very small piece of that investment would be covered by the fact that they didn't have to pay property taxes on those initial years and so when a company like um, Mr. Spence's comes here um, and it doesn't exist and we're faced with do we want to give away property taxes that we currently don't have? We're not getting any because the business isn't here. He's willing to come and start and risk and take whatever, whatever uh, risk are incumbent on establishing this manufacturing company. And in exchange for that, we're saying we're not getting any now and we're going to continue not to get any property taxes from you because we believe that the return is going to be far in excess of uh, what we gave away. And we didn't lose out on anything unless he was a success and created the jobs. And so um, I think most folks would see that that's a wise investment. Um, you went from zero to 10 years later, uh, 380-something thousand dollars in property taxes. Um, and now he's coming to us with an expansion proposition that's going to cost us $233 a month and the good news for Mr. Terrio is that if you want to get the seven to one return on investment as a councilman this is your checkbook this is Lafayette's checkbook and for that $233 he's paying 31,000 a month in payroll and I don't have how many clothes they're buying for their kids with that 31,000 I don't know if they're going eat somewhere on that 31,000 but I feel very confident whether it's two hundred and thirty four dollars a month double that triple that or seven times that it's a good two hundred and thirty three dollar investment um, and those are the types of analysis that we need to make because if he came up here and said his payroll was four thousand dollars a month then we should do that same analytics and say is that worth the two hundred and thirty three dollars that we're giving away but it's not 4,000, it's 31,000 a month in payroll. 
So in these instances, from now on, because of the governor's executive order, we will have the ability to have these conversations, to do those analytics, to ask those questions that you'll ask, which are all important and great questions. But in this particular instance, the numbers far outweigh the amount of money that they're going to be exempted from in property taxes. And so I would just ask that you do vote to allow us to issue that letter. Mr. Robidoux, before you um, attend to the mic, you, you bring up a good point. Um, you say that with you, surprise. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> doing bad, but, but my, my question is, you, you say we have this opportunity to have these discussions and, and analyze each situation in a standalone. And, and one situation, like you say, 4,000 versus 31 may have a different view, which is a good way of, of looking at it. But these matters, they, is the executive order, it has to be brought forth by the administrator of the local government? Like in this case, this, so you're gonna have an opportunity to evaluate and assess what, is, what you view first as worthy of even coming to the council That's to correct. ask for permission. That so, is correct. So that's, that's one evaluation there. There may be something that don't get through you, I would assume. That, that could be the case. That could be the case. Because you're not looking to just give it away. You, you're going to analyze these situations. So that, that, that was a good point, I think, to bring forward is that it goes through you, but it still has to come to us, get past us, but it still needs the approval of two other taxing entities, being the sheriff in the Lafayette Paris School System, to even be considered done with so thank you for that well and and I'm not trying to prolong this and I apologize but you bring up a good question and I would ask uh, I'm surprised <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, I'm surprised because I haven't thought of it but I would ask uh, Mr. Escott if he could <laughs> um, weigh in I don't know if the ordinance has to come from the mayor's office or if the council could actually bring an ordinance giving me authorization to, resolution. to do a, a resolution, I'm sorry, giving me the authorization. And, and, and that may be a question for another day because I'm bringing this one and, and asking you for authorization, but I don't know if it has to originate with me or not. You're not, sir? I, I, I don't have the executive order. Glenn, do I, I can address the point. Okay, the thanks. The executive order requires a letter of support from the uh, local government, the local school board, and the local sheriff, but it specifically says that that letter of support has to be backed up by a resolution of the governing body. So, so the point is, while the letter comes from the chief administrator, the mayor president in this instance, it'll come from the president of the school board and it came directly from the sheriff. Obviously the sheriff is not governed by a council, but in the instance of LCG and the school board, the, the, the executive order very clearly indicates that the mayor president or the president of the school board cannot issue the letter of approval on their own. It has to be supported by a resolution of the governing body. So frankly, as these things come forward, uh, you know, you can obviously choose to put it on the agenda or not put it on the agenda. Any other individual could go to any council member and ask it to be put before the council, but it has to be supported by resolution. But a of the resolution council. without a letter, you have to have both, is what I'm understanding. Well, a resolution, a resolution supporting a letter of support. I mean, I. I don't want to get into those politics, but I suspect that the council could issue a resolution of approval directing the mayor president to write a letter and say, my council has approved, you know, such and such a date. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Uh, again, uh, you guys are represent, uh, have a business, a business in the district that I represent. Again, like Mr. Boudreaux said, I really appreciate that. Thank that. Uh, again, we talking about all this, we talking about fifty thousand dollars over a five year period. And like Mr. Conk said earlier, home state exemption is seventy five thousand dollars. Whatever district three can get as far as developing opportunities for people to work, again this is for single families. I really appreciate that. Now I'm gonna support it. Again, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And again, anything that can happen in district three, we need every every opportunity to uh, get jobs for the community. Thanks again. Appreciate that. Mr. Nakan? Yes. Um, 
I just would like to say that, you know, everybody's bringing up great points. I guess the thing that sticks out to me is the, the homestead exemption, 75000 I'd like to know what that number would be. We're talking about we need money, we don't want, we've given so many businesses these breaks, but what would that number be if this parish got rid of the homestead exemption? That's 75000 So what I'm saying is $233 a month is what it costs LCG, or $2,800. I mean, I just think we're, we're bickering here over, obviously, what our mayor has looked at, analyzed, has gotten approval from other entities that this is a good return on investment. At the same time, I also feel like we, we shouldn't give away everything, but until everybody wants to just get rid of everything and get rid of business deductions and get rid of homestead exemption, then we don't need to be bickering over a, a man and his family and a company that is producing jobs no matter what district it's in. So, you know, from a business standpoint, or it, if we want to look at numbers, it's hard for me to hear, let's not support this because we've given away too much already, but the truth of the matter is, when you give up $75,000 homestead exemption times 220 something thousand people, that's a bigger number. And I don't think nobody in this room wants to give that homestead exemption up. And I'm not an advocate for it, but I'm saying cut this man some slack here. The mayor president has done his job. He has worked in Baton Rouge. He has followed the protocol. And I thank him for doing his homework and bringing the resolution. He's made a lot of sense. And I don't see why we're up here debating a $2,800 or $31,000 and we're going to get the return on investment. And we're going to look at that as that's not good government, but yet we're going to keep everybody's 75000 homestead exemption. So if we really want to put all the money and really want to take care of everything, then nobody should get any deductions, and we should just go ahead and straight up and pay for everything. Now, so I want to commend this gentleman and, and your company and what you do and the jobs that you bring, and I hope you get to 25 or 30 positions. I'm sure there's a lot of mothers out there or, or guys that got laid off in the all field would love to be creative and, and help your business grow. Um, and I, I like the fact that you bring in California money or Texas money. Bring it here. So um, I'm going to support you and, and just tell you that um, we do need to have a system. We do need to have measurements in place. And I think in this situation, I think it was done right. And if they're all done that way and the facts are presented, obviously, if you were only bringing $3,000 a month in payroll and you wanted a, a bigger break, then would, I mean, obviously, that would not be a smart move. And I don't think our mayor president or any council member would bring that up to the table. So. I uh, appreciate everybody's input, but that's, that's where I stand. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Terrio? Yes, Mr. Robito. I uh, just wanted to um, uh, address some of the things you had mentioned and that what I look at is the big picture and that how many businesses are taking advantage of naturally something that's available to them and people say well why are you doing it you know to this business because it's out there and it happens where the state's doing it local governments are doing it um, the question is how much money in total is being done and it has nothing to do with these individuals it's just as a combination of everything before your 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 administration came into office there was uh something that came across the council prior to some of these that weren't here and um basically they used more or less the same setup that you did and that we're going to waive a million dollars plus a year in property taxes but that's only twenty six hundred dollars a day but it was for 11 years so you're looking at almost $15 million plus or more, and they break it down to small numbers. I understand this is only, uh, you know, a couple of hundred dollars or whatever it is uh, for a year. Now, that's not the issue. But when you combine everything as a whole, you're looking at substantial money in millions and millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, uh, just from my experience, I mean, we, we, we gave one business a huge, huge break in taxes 
when they themselves were going to be coming here regardless of whether we gave them the break or not. So that is what I'm looking at, not fine-tuned on just what they do, and they, they do a great job, and, and has no, it's just the whole concept of it. Uh, how do we put a hold of it, and how do we get a handle around it to say who gets what? And to address something that Mr. Conk said earlier, and, and that uh, I'm, not, I'm talking about individuals with smaller businesses that don't have the capability or don't have the knowledge of where and the resources to go and apply and the legal representation to provide them how they can uh, acquire and get state funds, local funds, and things like that. So again, uh, nothing to do with the local company. I just want to make sure that uh, you understood where I was coming from. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. Mr. Conk? Just a couple of observations in closing on my end. The one thing that I find a very positive approach on this is that this brings us a level of transparency that has not existed in the past. This is bringing it to the level of government that is impacted by mandates issued by the state to encourage economic development which I think is a great process. But in the past, there have been instances where a property tax exemption was issued and local government was not even aware of it until the impact was felt by the, we were not able to assess the proper values for taxing purposes. So the level of transparency is welcome. And I look forward to reviewing case by case on every project that comes before us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I think that was the last blue card. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, we had an amendment to this matter that was motioned by Castile, second by Conk, that has already passed. So now we're going to be voting on the resolution as it has been amended. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? No. District 1? Yes. District... That's it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my ink pen ran out, so... <laughs> Motion is approved uh, um, as amended. Resolution 34-2017. A resolution of the Lafayette City Parish Council adopting the Citizen Participation Plan as amended under 24 CFR 5.154, defining local procedures for public participation in the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Consolidated Planning Process. Entertain a motion. Motion by Nakin. Second by Conk. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Yes, sir. Please call the vote. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Motion is approved. Resolution 35, 2017. A resolution of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Community Development Department to participate with the Louisiana Housing Corporation in the filing of an application with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for a comprehensive housing counseling program grant. Motion by Nakin, second by Cook. Council discussion? There is none. Any blue cards? Sure. Call the vote. District 4? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? District 3? Yes. Motion is approved. Okay, we're going to move to ordinances for final adoption. Again, this is a public hearing, and blue sheets are available. For anyone wishing to address the council, the five-minute rule does remain in effect. Liz, item number nine, please. Ordinance 123-2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify properties fronting the 700 block of Eliza and Fields Drive, case number ZON 2017-23, 700 block of Eliza and Fields Drive rezoning located generally northeast of Camellia Boulevard 
north of Woods Crossing and south of the Vermilion River from CM Commercial Mix to RS-1 Residential Single Family and RS-2 Residential Single Family. Motion by Nakin, second by Abair. Council discussion. There is none any blue cards? We do have one speaker, Louis Giat. I want to thank y'all for letting me address the council. I represent Mr. and Mrs. Fontenot. She happens to be my daughter. He happens to be my son-in-law. And um, they've moved over here uh, several months back. They bought a house on, on, on Elysian Fields. Then they bought this lot so they could build a house. They took the first house. It's a really small house. And when they bought this, it was a zone commer uh, residential commercial mix so they could build. So they, they went and they got plans and then it turns around, somebody changed it on them. And that's why we're here today to change it back to residential so they could go on with their plans to build a bigger house and then they'll have two houses occupied over there. And I just want to th thank y'all for listening to me and I hope we can get it done. I'd like to have them here all the time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any more blue cards? Sir? All right. Please call the vote. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Motion is approved. Ordinance 124 2017. An ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to sell at an internet auction miscellaneous surplus LCG movable property 